Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Alex, the architect for Backfrap, and in today's video we're going to create our parse application that will host all the data for our to-do app written in React Native using parse. So here I have my front-end design that will be retrieving the data and saving the data to the parse uh, app, and here I have the Backfrap site open. This is probably the first website you're going to see when you create your free account. This is what we call the back for app dashboard and in here you see all the applications that you have access to. Right now this is a new account so you only see our sample blog application and to create a new one you hit this build new app button, give it a good name, so I'm going to call mine to do app and hit create. At this point, we are deploying your application through all the application servers and your database through all the database servers. So if at one point we lose one or more servers, the other ones will handle this traffic and your application will keep up online. This takes a couple of seconds and this will present you the parse dashboard. It is where you're going to store your classes and objects inside the database browser and uh, is also where you retrieve some keys that are needed on the front end to operate. So here we have the database browser. It already comes with two classes created by convenience, the user class, so you can create and uh, manage users and the role class so you can group users with similar priv privileges making it easier to maintain those users over time. To create a new class you hit this create a class button and I'm going to do this graphically in the video today but you can also of course do it programmatically from your front end if you want to and I'm going to name my class to do and hit create class your to do class will show up here with a few properties already set. Object ID is a string which is unique per object inside this database, so you can use it kind of a primary key if you come from uh, regular SQL databases. Uh, updated that and created that are timestamps, those are automatically populated and updated by parse, so you can always know when a object was first created and last updated. And ACL stands for Access Control List, it uh, means the ability to read or write a specific object inside the database, so our access for reading and writing go as deep as the object level in parse. To add a new property to this class, you hit this Add a New Column button, here are all the data types that we, that, uh, we support, basically anything that is JSON encodable can be stored as a property. So I'm going to create a string property and call it title. Click add column and my title as a string showed up here. And also I'm going to add a new column, which will be a boolean, and we'll call this done. Add column and done as a boolean showed up there. If you want to add a new row just for testing, you click this add a row button and you can set it from here. So my first to do and done, it will be true. This object is now saved and you can query on it from now on. This class has also all the methods for uh, creating, reading, updating and deleting objects already published for REST APIs and uh, GraphQL. If you use our SDKs, you have everything you need to operate this class already available to you. But there is something important that you need in here to use inside your React Native project. If you come here to App Settings, you will find here Security and Keys. We're going to need two informations from this uh, site. The first one is the application ID and the second one is the JavaScript key. You should protect these keys. Parse is made by design so you can expose those keys, so if, if uh, a end users find out these keys, there is actually no problem. The only sh key you should protect at all times is your master keys, so you should never uh, share this with anyone. But it's also a good practice and a good idea to protect the application ID and the JavaScript key as much as you can, making it harder for other users to find it out. So here I have my React Native project inside my Visual Studio and the first thing I have to do is to import the parse uh, SDK. We do that by typing import parse from parse slash react-native.js. So with that done, we have also to set our async storage by typing parse.setAsyncStorage storage and async storage, which comes from the async storage module. Once I have this uh, typed out, I need to set the application ID and JavaScript key that we retrieved from the website. We do that by typing parse.initialize and then passing two strings. The first one will be our application ID and the second one will be our uh, JavaScript key. 
So I'm going to copy this value and paste it here. And I'm going to copy this value and paste it there. We also have to set our uh, URL in here. So we type parse dot server URL equals and then we pass it as a string https parse api dot back for app dot com. If I now save this and compile, my application will can will be able to connect to parse and save and read all the objects in there. So this is how you set up your parse application in React Native to connect to the parse backend. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you on the next one soon. See you soon. Bye bye.